If it were 1972, we'd start out this edition of our behind the scenes video tours from the Lake Spear Railroad Museum by playing the OJ's hit of that year, Love Train. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And before we get started with today's episode at the Lake Spear Railroad Museum here in the St. Louis County Depot in downtown Duluth, I wanna thank everyone who took advantage of our special Valentine's Day offer to join the museum and get a free guidebook to the museum. The fourth edition, which is hot off the presses, we had a lot of people take advantage of it, and it ends today. So this is your time to show some love for the Lake Spear Railroad Museum and that special person by getting a membership to the Lake Spear Railroad Museum and getting this $20 value for free. Now, of course, we told you in an earlier episode about women who had made contributions to railroading by having inventions that changed that industry for the better. And we left you with Eliza Murphy, who was a black inventor who worked on a way to wick oil up around bearings and trains to make for a smoother ride that didn't jam up and start on fire. She was a black entrepreneur and she had 16 different lubrication patents in all. We reminded you that February is Black History Month, so we're going to continue on that theme today. And another black inventor who was also interested in tropology, which is the study of friction. His name was Elijah McCoy. Elijah McCoy worked for the Michigan Central Railroad, and he noticed that, well, you had to lubricate everything. He was an oiler, which meant he had to walk around the engine and constantly oil all the moving parts. So what did he do? He invented the McCoy automatic oiler. And it was so popular and so well made, it's like this one here, which is a Nathan, but it had the same theory. Fill it with oil, it works automatically, the oil is then distributed and piped to the different places that need lubrication on the locomotive. So popular was this with train crews that they started asking for it by name. They didn't want just any old oiler on their engine. They wanted the real McCoy. Another black inventor that had a great impact on transportation, railroads, and streetcars was Granville Woods. He was born in Columbus, Ohio in 1856, and he worked for the Springfield, Jackson, and Pomeroy Railway, which was an Ohio railroad, a very small one. It only lasted five years from 1874 to 1879. But in the time he worked there, he learned that communication on the railroad was vital for safety. And so he had over 60 patents that included telegraph improvements, telephone improvements that ended up with Alexander Graham Bell's invention being part of a Granville Woods invention. So he was very, very well known and a great inventor. But he also had an impact on streetcars. Now, the streetcar gets its electricity to run the motors from the wire overhead. And to connect to that wire to the motors on the wheels, you had to have a troll. It was called a troll because it trolled the wire. Well, they wore out because all it was was a hook that went over the wire. And this hook would spark and arc, and it was causing the trolley to jerk. What Granville Woods invented was the trolley wheel. So now this wheel turns, that's the connector. All of a sudden, no sparking, no arcing, and you have a nice smooth ride, it not stops and starts. That was Granville Woods' introduction to a wonderful world of inventions that spanned over 60 patents altogether. Andrew Jackson Baird was born in 1847, got a job working on the railroad. He was on the ground crew, a switch crew, and his job was to couple cars together on the train. Now, the way that was done back in the day was with a link and pin coupler. This is the link, this is the pin. You stand here, drop it in, but now you've got to stay here to hold this up so as the other car comes to you, you can drop the pin in there, which meant you had to be between the cars when they coupled together. What happened to Andrew Jackson Baird? He got caught in a switching accident and lost a leg. That got him thinking, you know, there must be a better idea. What if cars could couple like this, like a handshake? And what he invented is what we have here. This is a Jannings coupler, very unchanged from the time that Andrew Jackson Baird worked with Jannings to to perfect this type of coupler. And now, of course, you don't have to be between the cars to couple. You can stand safely to the side. A great invention. Our final story about a black inventor that changed railroading is a part of our behind the scenes tour today at the Lake Spear Railroad Museum. And we're really going behind the scenes because this car is normally not open to the public, but today we just happen to have the key. Come on in. This is one of the coaches from the William Crooks exhibit and is one of the oldest pieces in the museum's collection. And it's a combination car. Obviously, passengers sat here. Behind that door over there was the baggage section. And more importantly, behind this door was the toilet. 
And that's where Louis Latimer comes in. Louis Latimer was born in 1848. He was the son of runaway slaves from Virginia. Unfortunately for his dad, his dad got caught. So he was defended in court by the famous abolitionist, Frederick Douglass, who actually won the case and freed him for a short time. However, the Minnesota-based Dred Scott decision changed all that. But Louis Latimer grew up as a free man. And because of that, he was able to explore his inventiveness, which led him to toilets on trains. Back in the day, toilets on trains, remember that famous sign, don't flush in the station? There was a reason for that, and I think we all know why. But the earliest of non-flush toilets was just a hole in the floor of the coach. You could see the track as you went along using your toilet hole to, of course, relieve yourself. Well, when you're not there, all that dust and all that dirt, that came up back through that hole. So going to the bathroom was even a worse experience if the train was moving. That's why they had to put the sign out, don't flush in the station, because it was much more tempting to flush in the station when you didn't have all this dust and dirt coming up at you. So Louis Latimer invented a mechanism, the first one that allowed the hole to be closed and then to open and to flush. He invented for trains the flush toilet. Louis Latimer made a great, great invention that really improved train travel. He died on December 11th in 1928. And where was he living? Where was Louis Latimer living at the time that he passed away? The man who invented the flush toilet for trains? He was living in Flushing, New York. A coincidence? I think not. <laughs> and I think this is your last opportunity to take advantage of our love special on the love train. And we love you so much. We're going to give you a free guide to the museum, a $20 value. When you sign up today is your last day to be a new member of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. And we say to you, we love you for doing it. Thank you very much. And remember, let's take care of each other.